All right, so yes, as uh, Chris was alluding to, I am the artist formerly known as Michael. Um, he had another meeting to go to, and so he sends his regrets, and he had me uh, fill in as his understudy. Um, and I've seen his presentation a few times, so I, I think I can talk pretty well to, to the program that he runs um, out of uh, uh, Agassiz, British Columbia, with a satellite station at, in Abbotsford at our Clearbrook substation. Um, so to start off, his uh, program is split roughly uh, half and half into downstream work, which is developing cultivars, and then upstream work, working on germplasm development. So he works from 8 in the morning till 12 o'clock, working on developing germplasm, and he switches his mindset completely and does the afternoon on, on cultivar finishing. Um, his uh, objectives in the program, and this is based on grower feedback over the years to develop uh, an, a, a program that meets the requirements for for industrial production. Uh, top of the list there's machine harvestability. He's uh, started using uh, uh, machine harvester to evaluate seedling plots for the last six years to try and uh, move genetics forward. And I'm gonna talk about that a little bit later on. Um, looking for root rot and RBDV resistance, uh, resistance to aphids, cane diseases, um, and all at the same time as bringing in sources of, uh, of fruit quality from elite cultivars and combining that with wild sources of pest and disease resistance is the overarching uh, approach to breeding raspberries in, in the program. Um, so uh, just an overview of what went on this year, a recap, and uh, it's always good to hear how things go from year to year. Uh, the, uh, the program is looking at uh, 39 plots, 39 different selections of different genotypes um, of, in five plant plots in the machine harvest trial. Uh, a relatively low number of new seedlings went out, but that's just because this goes up and down over the year based on the number of crosses that were done in, in previous years. A uh, relatively high number of crosses, 100 crosses, um, and, and some uh, new selections made from the seedling plots, as always. Um, some of the major activities for further down the stream, closer towards cultivar release, are evaluating of machine harvest trials that were planted in 2014 and 2015. So the 2014 trials, uh, the 2017 year is, is year two of, of mature production, and the 2015 uh, trial looking at the first of two, two year, years. Um, the, they're, they're working in the greenhouses there in, in Agassiz to look at uh, screening for root rot tolerance and RBDV. Um, it's something that's not presented up here. They, they, they've added a component looking at different yield components as they relate to machine harvestability in these machine harvest uh, trials and, um, and then added uh, looking at what's called family selection to improve yield. So as in, 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 instead of looking at individual seedlings and the yield of each, of each one individual plant, they're using whole rows of families to try and move the genetics forward by selecting uh, from a, 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 a family perspective. Um, some of the data from the t first of those two sets of trials that they spent a lot of time on this year, uh, the second year of the 2014 trials would have been this year. This is looking back at last year's data. And you see up here in comparison to Meeker, uh, a selection called B uh, BC10-100-108 and at Wiley's Lake, Willie's Lake rather, uh, had had uh, impressive yield. This is all ordered by yield, with the top yields being at the top there. Um, and uh, th so, in the first year, a lot of their selections looked really good in comparison to standards like Meeker. But then, once you got onto um, the the second year, that story began to change a little bit, and some of the excitement about some of those initial selections was a little bit moderated. Um, so, if you look here, you've got the tw the first year yield and the second year yield, and then the cumulative. Uh, first two years of yield there. Um, some general comments are that most of the things that were impressive in the first year didn't seem to follow through in terms of yield in the second year, uh, which, which is somewhat discouraging. Um, and then that one selection that I mentioned in the previous slide, BC10-100-108, um, didn't seem to have the fruit quality that would be uh, required for a machine harvest cultivar. Um, just highlighting a couple of additional uh, genotypes here. Um, uh, a lot of the material that's down towards the end of this uh, chart here, uh, and, and he's cut off most of the genotypes, it's, most, it's just the top yielders here. Uh, so, some of the stuff is lower down, machine harvest well, but it's taking time to catch up on improving yields uh, 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 in, the, in, the, in the parent populations. Um, just to highlight a couple of pictures of some of the material that we just saw on that graph there. 
this is uh, one of the genotypes that was particularly interesting in the first year, but that uh, excitement was moderated on in the second year. Typically good quality and hopefully some root rot tolerance coming into the germplasm. Um, and yet, if, even if it picks well and is machine harvestable, uh, and has good yield in the first year. If the yield doesn't follow through, then it's it's uh, it's a uh, it, it, it's a pretty clear indicator that it's going to end up being parent material as opposed to um, uh, something that actually gets released as a cultivar. So he's just got a couple of examples of fruit in the trays off the machine harvester. Uh, this one uh, is a similar story in terms of uh, uh, the 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 not so impressive yield in the second year. Um, but what stands out for it is that it's a relatively early selection. Um, and uh, that's, that's important because uh, yield and earliness are negatively correlated with each other. So if you're breeding for earlier stuff to get away from the blueberry season, uh, you're also going to be selecting for relatively lower yields. Um, and so it's exciting for him to find a selection like this that, that seems to have good fruit quality and is also early. I'm going to really briefly go over this, uh, this summary of the last two years of, of replicated trials here. So made 49 selections. Nothing jumped out in a big way from the 2014 trials, um, but uh, to the selections that and one cultivar now that uh, Pat is going to talk about, WC 2166 and 2188 showed uh, really good quality in the trials up in, 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 in Clearbrook and in Abbotsford. Uh, from 2015, um, it was a very good high vigor planting, um, and it's a question whether or not all the top yielding uh, selections are going to have the type of fruit quality that'll make them cultivar quality. Uh, final set of graphs here. I'm going to go over four genotypes here. And again, we're cutting off all the lower yielding ones off the bottom. This is the 2015 yield trials at Clearbrook. So this is the first year of seeing them in, in good production. Um, first one to highlight is this uh, 108442. It's got very large, chunky, thick droplets. Um, and uh, so the berry is likely going to be a heavy berry relatively speaking. Um, it didn't seem to pick until dead ripe, which means that machine harvestability might not be optimal. Um, but that sort of a observation that he makes is, is quite, uh, you got to temper that based on the fact that he was only harvesting every three days in these plots. And it might be different, a different story if he were harvesting every, every two days as, as is more common in industry, right? Um, another selection, uh, 1084.9 large uh, berry, but again, the problem is that it might not pick as well as is required. But he is quite excited about this one, so it's, it's getting into propagation now to see if we can move it forward for further stages of uh, evaluation. Uh, a third one, sibling of the previous one that I just mentioned, um, lower yielding, but uh, it, it's still quite a bit higher than Meeker in terms of yield, a larger berry as well. Um, uh, and it's a very uh, uh, strong and vigorous plant, and so it's got some potential. And then a last one to mention here, uh, similar yields to Meeker, 10.71.27, uh, is, uh, is, sorry, it's not your own presentation, sometimes you got to stick to your notes a little bit more. Um, the, the, what's interesting about this one is that it's, it's a relatively early selection and that the last pick was on July 20th. Um, and then uh, uh, some of the work on the, uh, the, the morning work that Michael does when he first gets up in the morning is uh, working on germplasm development. This is a half wild selection. Uh, made from wild material from Quebec, so it uh, crossed with commercial quality uh, gen uh, germplasm. So this selection is called BC 1508-3, um, and this is what's being used to bring earliness into the program. So this uh, lateral was harvested off the plant on July 4th in this season. So it's bringing in wild earliness from other germplasm and trying to introgress it, is the nerd term, uh, into, into uh, commercial quality uh, material. And with that, Michael always likes to thank the numerous people that support his program, um, and he always apologizes if he missed anybody uh, out there. And with that, I'm going to put up his contact information, um, but if you have any questions about his program, I can try to answer that to the best of my ability. No question? Anyone? Thanks, Eric. Up next is Jules.